All right, let's get into our agenda. The, the changing complexion of the season. The champs have taken two on the nose and the challengers have picked up the sense. This is evolving into a fascinating premiership battle. I think it's game on now for the premiership. What a start this is. Blistering. When the whips are cracking at Geelong, it's the same reliable players that just stand up year after year, week after week. Geelong Footy Club, and the coach has got every right to have a smile on his face. I don't have any expectations or take anything for granted. I understand the people that question us over the last decade, to be honest, because we've been a bit hard to work out. And we're certainly not shouting from the rooftops about where we are or how good we are or what's possible for us. We're just sort of going about our business. They're going to be thereabouts again, there's no doubt about it. Any of the rating premiers on the own deck, how do you describe that one? Oh, it was a, it was a beauty. What a night! for the Sydney Swans. Melbourne lose two in a row. An epic night at the MCG. It just probably underlines we've got great belief. The players have got great belief in themselves to be able to keep going. This could be a landmark win for this young group. Sometimes you need one of those signature wins to really propel you on to great things. He's the man for the moment. We haven't got everything right in the first half of the year. We've made some mistakes. We've let some games slip. But if they keep going and keep being competitive in games, we can give ourselves a chance. Welcome to AFL season. You know, it's uh, it's a tough industry. We need to keep finding ways to get better as a footy club. And it's a long year. And just at the moment, we're not quite at our best. But that doesn't mean it's going to last forever either. A fantastic fortnight they've beaten. First and second. They're searching for history. They should start believing. Going up against the best in contested games and close games and coming out on the right side of them. Oh, I think it builds belief. It was high stakes. I was at second playing third. We could be sitting on top of the ladder right now, but we're not. And three have lodged themselves in the top four. Healthy crowd today. A big day for the club. I'm glad we could put on a show for them tonight. Out of those events comes the question, how broad is your imagination for the Premiership race? Yeah, no, it's absolutely uh, more broader than it was three, four weeks ago. Um, that's what happens. You know, we, we spoke about it five weeks ago, Jerry. They're only human. You know, footy doesn't deliver anything on a platter to any team. You've got to work hard. You've got to be... You've got to, it's a boring thing to say, so you've got to be on your game. You've got to have everything happening for you because there's going to come a stage where an opposition is going to have everything happening for them and you've got to withstand it. And the Demons have been able to do it. Last two weeks, they weren't able to do it. Simple as that. And as soon as that happens, as soon as that happens, Jared, that little creak in the door gets a little bit wider. Mm. That's all it does. And it's a mental game, football. That, 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 that fortress Melbourne... Watching them run out as a gang and looking at them and going, oh, geez, they're big and tough and really good. Now they're looking over saying, you know, they're not as big and tough as I thought three weeks ago. And there's a few teams with a bit going on. So let's yeah. pick through them, shall we? Yeah. Fremantle, is, a couple of weeks ago they were coming off those losses to Gold Coast and Collingwood and there were questions that had been created, including if they went on a sequence of losses, would they be vulnerable? And then they went... Bang, bang, bang. Melbourne and the Brisbane Lions, and that is the best form in football. Yeah, it is pivotal, the, the comments by John, um, Justin Longmuir a couple of weeks ago. Let's ask him about it yeah, tonight. Yeah. You know, and how much of an effect that has played. So, when you, again, the man in the stand, Jared, when you watch a team play, all you want to look at is, are they having a go? And their last two weeks, they're absolutely having a go. But let's dig a little bit deeper. The, so, so teams recruit and teams draft. OK? Now, when you draft, you hope that your development goes really well. Brace or who else? Go through some young... The young Shrong. Shrong. You, know, you get some young fellas in. And then we're going to go out and recruit. Aish, Collier, Brody, Akers. Four cast-offs from four different clubs. And Fremantle said, you come to us. And not only have they got a game, they've improved every one of them. So that says a lot about the club, the environment... And it says a lot about the coach, uh, of getting the best out of them, giving them confidence. So they've got three of those four are generally playing midfield in a really, really good midfield yeah. group. So, and they had no five. They had, their, they had David Monday, Monday playing. And their next three experienced players didn't play in a big game against the number two seed at home in the wet. 
and they and they wrestled them into the turf, mate. I mean, what a what a performance! When what a the performance. Lions had the ascendancy, they did hold up down back to reduce the damage that was done at the scoreboard. And then when they mm. muscled control, they do get it on the scoreboard rather quickly, don't they? No, they do. When you say muscle down the back, sometimes I think when an opposition's got a run on like the Lions had there for a period. I think some some of it's luck at the back. Like you might just get a hand yeah, in yeah. or someone might just get across or someone might make a mistake. You think, oh, that was lucky. But you can, can be consistently lucky. You've got to have the people there to, to create that luck and that's what they're doing. But a lot of people are speaking about one, one aspect of the Fremantle team, as well as being tough and robust and will play you anywhere. When it goes forward of centre... They've actually got so much speed that you're running around, you think, God, look at them all. You can't give them an inch. So you've got to stay really close to them. And they, they just create so much, those, those small fellas. They've got, a, they've got a mosquito fleet in that sort of forward half of the ground that people are looking at going, ooh, good, they've, they've got a lot of people to circulate through that area. The Lions, so they've spent five of seven weeks on the road and their position is a good position. They're nine and three. They have become leaky at sort of unexpectedly over the past three weeks. Yeah, um, Chris Fagan was talking about it on radio tonight. In the last couple of weeks, they've really given up... Um, a bit technical, but they're giving up scores of stoppages. That they, everyone looks at the Brisbane midfielder and go, gun, 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 God, how are they ever going to get beaten? And he's saying tonight, no, no, the last couple of weeks, the opposition are scoring off, off their stoppage. And they're thinking, well, we have to fix that or we've got to fix the area where they're kicking it to. So they've got two areas. They're defending not great and they're losing at the stoppage. So, yeah, they've got some minor concerns, but they've got... See, it would... Coming back into form, it's going to take them a long while. Joe Danher, as Ralphie just said on, on, the, um, on the previous show, that he's, um, he's coming back this week. So they're going to get some artillery back, OK? But they've got some mirrors to fix. What did you say they were? Eight and three, nine and three? Nine and three. It's a tough... <laughs> Good spot to be, it's... nine and three. You lose. No, yeah, you win or you Good lose. Good test coming, St Kilda. Oh, I know, the they, they got... And a... then Melbourne. Yeah, they've got a massive test coming home. Yeah. Like, if they finish top four... It's going to sound ridiculous, but if they do finish top four, they will absolutely have earned the right to go into this final series thinking you don't want to play the Lions because they've got a really, really tough final um, ten weeks. The Sydney Swans have been hard to peg. Um, what was it? The Suns I agree with you. and the uh, there was another game, the Carlton game. We sort of go, no, nah, they're they're a few, they're on the futures market, and then they overrun Richmond and take it to Melbourne in the manner that they did. John Longmire's words, it was a beauty, and it was every bit of that. Oh, I'm with you, Jared. They are hard to peg, where you think, no, I don't think they can win it, and then you see them in consecutive weeks. And, and this is going to sound funny. We had, we, had, um, we had Joey Montagna a couple of Wednesdays ago talking about... Hey, hey, look at the Swans. There are different Swans. They need bigger bodies in the midfield because they're getting beaten up a lot early and they did get beaten up a lot again. The, the, um, the Demons got, got in front. But what, I, what we're seeing from the Swans, and I know this sounds a bit wanky, but it's, it's not trying to be, they've gone from a, a really hard unit and he says, oh, you play the Swans, it's stoppage and it's contest all the time to having weapons and run. But what they've snuck back in or got back in is a bit of that bloods fight, fight, fight. And when John spoke after the game, he spoke about that, hey, we're not giving up. We're not giving up. So what, a, what, what an asset that is to have to say to your players, hey, hey, you play for us, uh, you play, you never give up. Nothing is beyond us. 30 down, 25 down, we can win. And that just gathers, gathers a momentum yeah, yeah. of itself. So if they actually fix up the area so they don't go five down, well, they're, they're going to be a major threat. So they did it to Melbourne. There's a bit of a... It's a bit of a test. Is Do you, do you want to overreact? Do you want to underreact? What are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm reacting slightly. So my view on Melbourne is this emphasises a couple of things. One, they're not a great team yet. Mm. They are on the course to being a great team. The idea that I had that they would sort of idle their way through the season and rev on cue, yeah. no. No, that no. can happen. They haven't got their game honed yet and no. they are hitting opposition who are dog-hungry when they play them. 
and they are not at that edge mm. yet. So I think there's been a bit of long-term planning in their season and the Stephen May absence is when... When they do the voting for MVP and it always just defaults to who's the best player. Now, if you truly want to talk about who are the most valuable players, so go and have a look at Melbourne the last two weeks without Stephen May. It's broader than that, I know, but he is a centre of mm. gravity for them in that area. So they will want to get their game in order pretty smartly now, I think, particularly given the quality of opposition who are all going to use that game as their mm. testing material in the back half of the season. Yeah, I think you make some reasonable points there. And it doesn't help when you're missing a key defender and your key forward's not touching the ball in Ben Brown. And what Melbourne is seeing at the moment is life without Stephen May is not fantastic. And life without Ben Brown, he's not touching the ball, he's not fantastic either. Now that Tom McDonald's out, they've got some... They've got, they've got some... They've got some uh, thinking to do. They've got to find form and find, find some avenues. But... Um, yeah, I, I'm not panicking no. yet on Melbourne. I'm far from panicking. They have got... They've been presented with some hurdles. Again, Jared, mentally, <laughs> we know what it's for, to watch them play collective, tough, robust football together. If you miss a tackle, I'll get you. If he misses, I'll get you. And you think, God, <laughs> it's suffocating. We haven't seen that for a while, and play, teams are doing that to them. But when the stakes get higher, I actually think that every game's high stakes. But when you week after week after week after week in the middle of bloody June, and if you're a little bit off, they're going to they're going to get they're going to get you, and they did. So I reckon they can they'll be able to tighten that mentally up. Yeah. So they're still the, the best team. Yeah, I think so. The, the quest yep. to being a great team, and we were probably ready to anoint them too soon. Is th this is I reckon their journey from here is a really interesting. I told you about Adelaide in the early 2000s. Everyone's going Adelaide under Neil Craig. Oh, they cannot be beaten. They cannot be beaten. They're the best team in it. I think they went bang bang straight out of the finals. So we get so excited at round six, foot seven, eight. They're the best team. They'll never lose. That's rubbish. It is. History is. History's told us. Football has told us. Yeah, 